Hi, I'm Rachel Lynn and I'm on a journey to get out of my student loan debt and lose some weight along the way. If any of that interests you, go ahead and click that red subscribe button down below and stay tuned for the rest of this video because I am going over my July budget and how I did, how I saved, and all of that. So first up, my notes. I had a June payout. I kind of thought that I would get two more checks in June and then one more check in August, but I was actually paid out the rest of my checks at the end of June. I've always taken that last day of the month check and made that like the first of the month, and so I was paid out the end of June, and so that went into my July budget, and that's what I had to work with. So what that ended up meaning for me is that I ended up having a bigger income for the month of July, but at the same time I was also paid less than I would have been had I gotten three separate checks because of the way that the taxes work and they took out more taxes for that check and if I had thought about it ahead of time I would have changed my my tax um, withholdings but I also have church giving I need to adjust my giving this month um, to add in a week that I didn't account for um, from the previous month and I am continuing to give to my church even though I am no longer receiving an income so that is just something that at least for right now while I have the means I want to um, continue to give until I feel like it's not really an option to give anymore. Next up, I am going to go over my known allocations. That's pretty much my main bills and things that, that just basically come out automatically. And then it also includes any extra payments that I put towards my student loans. Or since I don't have a, a job right now and I'm currently looking for a new job. Side note, by the way, I'm actually wearing what I wore to my interview today. I went on an interview today. So um, that is good, looking promising. But anyway, since I don't have a job right now, I'm not applying my extra money to my student loans. It's all going into savings. And then once I have a, pay, a paycheck coming in, then I will apply all that money in savings towards my student loans. I have actually blocked that out for right now because I will show you at the end how much I actually put towards my savings. My rent is my undergraduate um, student loan payment. My parents are paying that payment and since I live at home with my parents, instead of paying them rent and then they pay me to make a payment, I just make the payment and it kind of covers my rent and then they pay me the difference. That is $273.66, and then my graduate loan payment is completely on me, 100%, and that minimum payment is $110.24. Like I said, I don't have an extra student loan payment. And then just for security sake um, for myself, I put an extra $300 into my extra checking account because I have a $500 emergency fund, and I just kind of felt like I needed a little bit more in there. Um, because I, since I don't have a job, I don't have health insurance, I just, I wanted to cover a little bit more. I contributed $170 towards my sinking funds. My HP Instant Ink, that is an ink service where I get printer ink mailed to my home for me, and it is $5.29 a month. And then my Verizon bill was $53.33. Next up is gas, and I only got gas once at Kroger on July 19th, and that was $25.06. Groceries is slightly complicated because I actually ended up going on vacation. I did a Money Monday video where I told everything that I spent on my cheap vacation. I went on a trip to Florida for a couple of days with family, and I was going to take all of this out of my family time sinking fund, but it fit in my main budget. So I decided to just take it from my main budget instead of taking it from my sinking fund. And that way I have more money in my family time sinking fund just in case, because my mom is sick and so she needs a transplant. And so I keep money in there just in case I need to travel to see her um, when she does end up getting a transplant. And, and so I have that on reserve for that. But I also consider other family events part of that family time sinking fund because I don't want to miss out on family time. So instead of taking it from there, I just took it from my main budget and, and I mean like really it just kind of worked out. So we stopped at several different places. There's Busy Corner for $6.99, Loves for $7.49, Flash Foods $6.62, BP $6.17, and then this last one, Kroger, that was actually my brother's birthday gift. I got him some candy for his birthday and that was $3.68 and that was $30.95 total from my grocery budget. 
I did not spend anything from my teaching allocation. From my spending allocation, I spent uh, $19.12 at Kroger. I actually can't remember what that was. I probably talked about it in a Money Monday video, so uh, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> and then Apple iTunes storage for $0.99. Cents. Then for my restaurant budget, I went to BJ's for a girls' night out, and I spent $18.32, and it was worth every penny. And then Cottage Inn, the, d the day after we got back from our family vacation, I went out with my dad and my uncle, and we went to lunch. We went to Cottage Inn, which is, it's kind of like a, a little diner in our area, and, and it literally looks like a little cottage when you go in there, and it's um, not downtown, but it's, um, you know, on the way downtown, like it's, it's on the way downtown. So, um, anyway, so I spent a total of $28.79 from my restaurant budget. That put me $3.79 over, but because I stayed under budget in so many other areas, I felt like it wasn't really that big a deal, um, because otherwise, if I wanted to stay in budget, I would have put that in my sinking fund for family time, because it was my dad and my uncle's family, and, um, I just, I would rather have been over a little bit where other categories make up for it then take it out of my family time. Next up is my weight loss allocation and I spent $30 on my August 5k and that was the Splash and Dash 5k and this one I feel like is a complete failure. So I spent $30 for a 5k and I didn't even go. Like I thought that the 5k was the following week and it was actually August 3rd and I thought it was the week after and I like I don't know how I missed the email that I don't it just I completely missed it and I didn't even get to go so I spent $30 and didn't even get to go and I'm not gonna feel completely horrible because my money did go to good use and it was able to benefit um, one of the children's hospitals here but it just really sucks that I paid for something and I didn't even get to participate and, and like I didn't even like pick up my packet so I didn't even get the t-shirt that goes with it and it sounded like a really really fun 5k and I completely missed it. Next up is my sinking fund allocations. So I actually spent a little bit for my family time sinking fund. My mom's brother and his son, so my uncle and cousin, came in from Florida and we had a family reunion and, and all of that and we actually went out to eat a couple of times and um, two uh, Two out of the three times, someone else paid for me. But one of the times that we went out, I paid for myself. That came from family time, and that was twelve thirty-six. And then while we were on vacation, part of my cheap vacation, I did do one big splurge dinner out with my family, and that was at Julianton Creek Fish Camp. I spent forty dollars and seventy-one cents, and um, we went to visit different family in Florida. <laughs> so this was um, on my dad's side. So. Um, like a lot of my family lives in Florida, but just in different areas of Florida. But anyway, we went out to dinner and it was like a fancy dinner. And so it, it was $40 and 71 cents. Now for my income for the month of July, I got my paycheck on June 30th. I got $3,119.16, which is a lot more than normal. Normally, normally it's like $1,100. And so you can see I actually missed out on about two to three hundred dollars um, I think actually I did the math I think it's about three hundred dollars I missed out on by them giving me one big check instead of three separate checks so I'm a bit disappointed and hopefully I can recoup some of that money come tax time next year but it doesn't help me out right now when I need money now I also got three dollars and 88 cents from capital one interest I have Capital One 360 accounts and they are interest bearing and since my savings has more money in it, I'm getting more money from my interest. So I actually have um, a link down below that you can use in the description if you want to sign up for a Capital One 360 account. You get a free $25 for opening a qualifying account and I get $20. So if you want to use my link then you can do that and earn some interest for your checking and savings accounts. Then I also got one last check from Churchill. Um, it runs through the end of June and this was the last day of racing in June that I worked and I was paid 132.72. 
and then I got a Capital One referral bonus. So thank you very much for whoever it was that, that signed up with my link. And that was $20 for me. And then also in the month previous, in June, I sold $7.05 worth of clothes on Poshmark. So my total income for the month of July was $3,282.81. So now I'm going to quickly go over everything what I had left. I spent everything for church that I had planned. I will reveal this at the end. Um, rent was right on target, graduate loan payment right on target. I didn't add anything to my extra student loan payment. Um, I added $300. I wasn't planning on that, but that, that was um, separate and that went into my extra checking account. My sinking funds was right on target. HP Instant Ink was right on target. Verizon was 16 cents over. I don't know why it was more, but it was. Um, gas was $99.94 under, so that was really exciting. Groceries was $19.05 under. Teaching was $25 under. Spending was $19.89 under. And then restaurants, I was $3.79 over. Are you ready to see how much I put towards savings for the month of July. Three, two, one, ta-da! I put $2,085.38. So that actually includes $3.88 from my interest that I earned from Capital One. And then it was $2,081.50 that I put from my income and, and all of that. So I am super proud of myself to be able to put that much. It, it sounds like a lot to me because I don't normally get paid that much. So I'm really excited that all of that is in savings. It's ready to go, ready to pay off debt once I have a job. And if I don't get a job right away, then it is sitting there. It is waiting on me to get a job so I can support myself. And so what I have done is actually, instead of putting income, I'm taking money out of that savings and kind of putting a negative number in that um, section from savings instead of income. Just because I kind of want to keep like income separate from um, everything else. Like it's not income because I've, I already have it. So I'm putting a negative number in my savings. So when I do my mid-month budget update, you'll have to see how I've done that. So I am super excited about all of that. Now my savings is going to go down because I did decide to get a new computer and I have actually purchased a new computer and you will have to see how much I spent on Monday when I talk about money Monday I will tell you how much I spent on a new computer um, I am not currently using that new computer because I don't know how to do screen capture and all of that so I'm just using what I know right now while I am learning that new computer so I would love to know from you how did your July go leave me a comment down below and let me know if you were able to put money into savings or put any money towards debt, let me know how much you were able to contribute on that. Also, don't forget to like this video and share it and um, subscribe and all that stuff. Definitely like and comment and share. That really, really helps me out here on YouTube. And then, of course, subscribing if you are not already to watch me get out of debt because I may not have a job right now, but I'm still working those goals and achieving those financial goals even without a steady income right now. You're also going to want to stay tuned because I will keep you in the loop on if I get a job and when I get a job. So make sure you are subscribed. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.